Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Kangen Omega Chapter 158. I don't think this chapter is as controversial as I expected it to be, but I did still see a few people complaining about it. So, I figure I might as well, uh... Well, I was gonna do this anyway, but give my opinion on the fight between Koga and Gia, and then I'm probably obligated to talk about how this doesn't really break the power scaling. Not really. Um... For the large part being because Gia's whole gimmick is that he's incredibly inconsistent. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about why Koga's able to beat Gia. For starters, on Koga's end, he's gotten a lot stronger since the time skip. Um, we already knew from fairly early on in the series that Koga has quite a lot of aptitude for martial arts. He's a prodigy. He is able to learn and grow very quickly. He got quite a bit stronger over the course of a few months um, in early Omega. And now, over the course of the time skip, he was continuing his training with Kureishi, presumably did more training with Joji because we see that his fighting style in the present still primarily focuses around karate. Um, then we know that he's been doing some training with Agito and Lalong. I don't know how recently he started that. Um, you know, maybe that was their first time training together or something. It's not really clear. Um, he may have had some training with Oma. There's no indication that he knows any of the Nico style in this chapter, which I know many people are relieved about. Um, once again, if Koga knows anything from the Nico style, it's going to be something really basic. I feel like indestructible would be like the most basic technique for Koga to learn from the Nico style because Akito knows that too. And maybe bone binding or something similar because Kuroki uses something similar to that and that's from the Kaiwan style, which is also a form of uh, karate. So, you know, maybe he'll learn how to like form a fist even if his fingers are broken. You know, like that that's the extent of the Nico style that Kogo would learn. I'm not really concerned about that. Um so, you know, great aptitude for martial arts, then does training with some of the strongest characters in the series and then goes and actually somewhat consistently has fights with other people. We know that he's been fighting with people in Kengen and Purgatory. He's had multiple matches in both organizations. So he's got both training and more experience, both of which are great for someone like Koga to get a lot stronger. But, oh my god, does this mean that Koga's become S-tier? He's already, oh my god, he beat Gia, who is able to pretty much low-diff Okoya and Ryuki, who were trying to kill him like three chapters ago how has he already become stronger than both of those guys well i'll tell you how he hasn't gia is just not as strong as he was a few chapters ago i feel like some of you guys have really bad reading comprehension skills you weren't really picking up on the fact that they were saying yeah gia is incredibly inconsistent the reason that he was able to beat the shit out of Okoya and Ryuki is because Okoya and Ryuki were trying to kill him. And as such, his fight or flight response was uh, kind of going crazy, you know. It was as extreme as it could be, and as such, it brought out all of Gia's power and skill. In this situation, right from the get-go, Gia's like, oh, I'm gonna crush this loser and get out of here. And as the fight's going on, he still can't stop thinking of Koga as someone way beneath him. So he's not interpreting him as a threat. He doesn't feel threatened. He doesn't feel like his life is in danger. So he's not going to be fighting at his full potential. Um, you know, he sees him as a mild threat. So he's still stronger than he was when, like, Himuro started kicking the shit out of him. Um, you know, using his uh, heavy whip style or whatever. Uh, cutting open Koga's arms with his fingers. Um, but... He's still using his hidden weapons as a crutch. He tries to pull that bomb or whatever out of his mouth, and Koga just wrist blocks that shit away. So, G is very clearly not fighting at his peak. So, people that are complaining about this breaking the power scaling or whatever, 
we're just not reading, and I don't understand why people are so mad about Gia getting beaten up again when his gimmick for the vast majority of Omega has been getting the shit kicked out of him by other people. Also, he's not dead, and since he's lost to Koga, he would view him as more of a threat now. And if they were to fight again, Gia would probably be using much more of his power, because he'd be like, oh, I lost to this guy, he can kick the crap out of me, oh god, and then, you know, the crazy stuff starts happening. So, yeah, I don't think this breaks power scaling or anything, I, I think we're still fine here. We're, we're, we're a-okay. And besides, Jan and Shen pretty much expected Gia to lose, so this just seems to be part of the plan, they're like, yeah, he's a loser. And, uh, as, uh, Jan himself says, uh, Xi is very complacent. Like, he just totally wastes the potential that he has. He never does training or anything. So, he's someone that really doesn't deserve to win over someone who's been training and working hard non-stop for, like, two years. Two and a half years at this point, actually. Um, so, I'm pretty much fine with it. Uh, I assume Gia's, you know, Gia's being taken into custody. He's probably gonna break out at some point. Feels like kind of a given. Um, but if Gia getting captured is part of Jan's expectations, I'm wondering how that's going to play into their plans. Um, with maybe taking down the King and Association, or distracting them? I don't know. We're gonna find out. So anyway, that's all for this week's review. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Kang and Omega chapter reactions and reviews every week that we get a new chapter. If you enjoy discussing Kang and Omega with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce on this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. And since it's the end of the video, I might as well give a shout out to my wonderful patrons. Special thanks to Archbear CJ 2 k Neo, Dijon Redden, K-God, Chris Redfield, Rat, Ryzen 4K, Artist, Wave of Manga, Sam the Ace, Chuck Speed and Seed, Jake Sterizzi, Play Free Labs, Kanichi Kaneda, Strawbones, Neverest, Daniel Powell, Brandon Smith, Abdullah Algaithi, Charles C. Highland, and Corey Richardson. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get shout outs at some point during videos or access to early and exclusive content, you can always become a patron as well. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.